the 10 minute drill. This is a big one. It's brought to you by Lloyd's Construction and Consulting, providing first class construction services on 1010XL. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit it. All right, Sports Concepts and Rationalizations coming your way. We call it the 10-minute drill, and after the drill, Beef, what are we doing? Uh, we're going to take care of the Googans today with uh, a family four-pack to the Spring Boat Show coming up April 16th, 17th, and 18th at the Met Park and Marina. They'll get 25 bucks towards services at Famous Auto and & Tire, and they'll be entered into a drawing for a chance to play with a partner at the Coastal Equipment Gugan Open coming up Monday, April 12th at Hidden Hills. I was looking at the... Um... Is this right? So Houston, who's in the Final Four, has beaten, correct me if I'm wrong here, a 15 seed, a 10 seed, an 11 seed, and a 12 seed to get to the Final Four? Uh, that sounds right. Because they, uh, they beat Cleveland State, yeah, a 15. Then okay. they beat Rutgers, a yeah. 10. Uh-huh. Then they beat Syracuse, an 11. Uh-huh. And then they beat... Uh, Oregon State, a 12. Sometimes the chips fall your way, and that looks like that's the case for Houston, right? I mean, as opposed to UCLA, who beat a 2-1 and a one back-to-back. And, also and beat, had to play an extra game. And had to play an extra game, beat an 11, a 6, a 14, a 2-1. and a one. Baylor went 16, 9, 5, and 3. And the Zags, 16, 8, 5, and 6. So um, UCLA's had the toughest road, obviously. Baylor second, Gonzaga third, Houston four. If you added up the points, Houston would be, you know, by far uh, uh, up there. 48, I believe. I, I think everyone thinks Baylor, Gonzaga. Baylor's only a five-point favorite. Gonzaga's like a 13-point favorite. I also heard UCLA. this last night, by the way, and this is another reason why I give UCLA so much credit. Uh, they lost their prized freshman, and then their best player tore his ACL in, like, December. Yeah, I wonder if it really is their best player. Well, maybe not. <laughs> that, that kid from Kentucky looks awful, or the Kentucky transfer looks awful good. I thought he was going to have an, a game like, uh, and he and he basically did. He scored half the points, but I like remember Goose Givens in the way sure. back when mm-hmm. in the championship. Yeah, game. like you don't what, what any stand out to you like in the Final Four where a uh, Bill Walton, um, Glenn Rice, what, Glenn Rice, crazy his yeah, year for Glenn Michigan. Rice, yeah. Um, Bill Walton was like 21 of 22 against Memphis, if I remember right. Some incredible number. But anyway, so uh, to come from an 11 C to lose, have to retool, is a good coach, man. Oh, of course. Yeah, and they, they, and they, they, they were saying last night, you know, he came from Cincinnati. How's that going to fly out in L.A.? It's flown pretty good. Flown pretty good. Is, uh, is this his second year? Second or third. It's been been. Definitely more that's definitely not his first. I'd say it's his third year, to be honest. But I think it's his third. Let me know. I, 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 that's a guess. Seems Second. Like, yeah. um, 19 and 12 last year in his first year. Obviously, no postseason. And 22 and 9 this year in Final Four. It's a good so. DNA program, too. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, if you're ever going to pick a team that could make a run through a, a bracket that's um, underrated, it, it would be UCLA. And this guy now has established himself as the coach. Do they, you know, does he stick around? They've had these other coaches. And they don't last, even with final four runs. Jim Herrick had a final uh, four run. Who's the guy that went to uh, – the young guy that went to um, uh, St. John's ultimately? Lavin. Lavin. Steve Lavin. I'm uh, looking at their coaches. And then Since... uh, Ben Howland took him to back-to-back. You know, maybe yeah. three straight. I think Ben Howland took him to three straight final four. They played Florida twice, and then that Kevin Love team uh, lost to Kansas in the final. So, you know, you always talk about replacing a legend, and John Wooden, the Wizard of Westwood, was, and he left in 75, okay? Uh, that's a long 40 plus, that's almost 50 years. By the way, you're correct, Jeff. Uh, six, seven, eight. Lost the title game to Florida, and they lost in the final four the next two years. Wow. Uh, Gene Bartow. Who was fifty two and nine? By the way, all and they've had a bunch of coaches. They've done just fine. I and guess then Gary just... Cunningham was fifty and eight, and then Larry Brown did his, and then Larry Farmer. They got some UCLA guys and Walt Hazard. So Larry Brown was the coach of that nineteen eighty team that went yeah. to the title. Yeah, they lost though, right? They lost to Louisville. Yeah, they didn't. Doctor Duncanstein. Ah, Doctor Duncanstein. Uh, Jim Herrick. Jack Givens. He won his against who? Duke. Uh, Spinarkel yeah. and Goose. Yeah, they won. Lavin, Howland, Alford, 
Oh yeah, you forget Steve. Oh, but he yeah. did okay too. I mean, he yeah. they went Sweet Sixteen a few times. I, Florida be, Florida went on, on on a stretch. They beat UCLA like five times in the tournament yeah. in ten years. Yeah, some pretty good coaches. They've had some good players too. I mean, look around the league. Zach Levine was on that uh, UCLA team that Florida beat. Um, the 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 lefty who plays for Kyle Anderson was a good player yeah. for them. Yeah, Alfred went to three Sweet Sixteens. Yeah, in four years, it's not bad. Or uh, is uh, Alfred coaching five years? I'm sorry. Is he at? Didn't he like go to like New Mexico or something? Uh, Nevada. Is that Nevada now? Alfred's at Nevada. He was there this year. They were sixteen and ten. <laughs> These coaches, man, they just bounce around, don't they? He's been okay everywhere. Alfred started. I'm at looking at it. Manchester, Southwest Missouri, and got him to the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. So then he went to Iowa, Iowa. and he was there for a while, but he didn't couldn't do great. Get- Never went to Indiana. It was always kind of rumored no. that he'd be the Indiana guy. Then six six years in New Mexico, then UCLA, and now the last two years in Nevada. Um, I mean, Alfred, by the way, is still not an old man. Probably. He's probably 57. It's like, all right, yeah. What was he on that 87 team? So, yeah, he's yeah, by my, probably the same age. 56. Yeah. Golly. He's been, he's been around, man. <laughs> he went. He, he didn't tread la- on that tire. He didn't last long. I, the best Alfred story was uh, was um, after he finished at Indiana. His playing career. It, yes. Uh-huh. And going into the NBA draft, and the Pacers could have picked him, and, and, they, and the city, obviously, Indiana, wanted Steve Alford, and they weren't real happy with the guy they took. Who was? This Miller guy? Reggie Miller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good pick. They huh? got over it. That's why the fans don't do the draft. <laughs> And that was uh, what, what was that dude's name? He was, uh, you know, heater smoking GM uh, with oh, yeah. buddies Donnie with Larry Brown, Donnie Walsh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was real, a good pick. real gruff New York guy. Yeah, it was great. It was pick. a smart pick. And it was the right pick. Would you agree that in some order, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, Kyle Trask will be the top six quarterbacks taken? Say again. Oh, Trask, you're adding to the... As- six. I'm saying of those... I mean, I think we all agree on the five. Would you put Trask in the six? Or let's just go with Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Mac Jones. We're positive those are the first five, correct? Yes. Give me somebody outside of that five who's uh, going to be a multi-year starter in the NFL. Don't we pretty typically get guys like that? Or no? It's typical, maybe too strong a word. No, I think that's... This is a deep quarterback draft, Dan. I'll tell you what I mean. This time last year, number eight in the mock drafts was a kid who never played football, and he's out of sight, out of mind, Jamie Newman. I mean, you want to talk about somebody who made a huge mistake opting out. That guy lost $40 million. Yeah. Now, maybe he wouldn't have realized that $40 million. Maybe his play would have exposed him, and he would have fallen down. But he was a guy that had all the juice and all the buzz, and opting out is just may not be the only reason, but he's, he's like a fifth, sixth, seventh round draft pick now in the mock drafts, whereas – you could have found him in the top 10. But I'll give you just a few names. This is off Joel Klatt's quarterback rankings. Yeah, I, listen, I know that, like, I know Sims was big on Mond. You know, Kellen Mond and had then, his pro day yesterday, by the way. You know, I, out of sight, out of mind. And I know that you're. there's big Trask. names, though. Ian Book worked out here with Denny. Ellinger. Ellinger. Ellinger's another one. I mean, Davis the, Mills from Stanford. I like that some. guy. So I've, Trask, Mond, Ellinger, Mills, Book. Mills is the only one you probably aren't familiar with. And I think they like that guy. What about Felipe Frank? Should he be Should he be included in that group? I don't see his name, yeah. do we? I mean, to have, be such a big, strong arm and big bodied guy. And he had a good year at Arkansas, by the way. And statistically, you know, Franks is one of those guys who the, the, the eye test never matches the stats. His stats are always better than what it looks like. It was like that at Florida. His numbers at Florida were better than he, than you felt watching him. At least it was for me. And I believe last year he went to Arkansas and he, he threw like single digit interceptions, like twenty and six or something. Or no, I he's an interesting one because I've always felt like my thought was he'll be in a camp. He'll definitely be in an NFL. Will camp. he be drafted? Do you think? I don't know. What are they? What? Are, he's definitely a later on guy. Yeah, um, I'm just. I'm so. I thought to be honest with you that through this part of it, mm-hmm. he would help himself. Yeah. Right, because he's just like I said, he's just so big. And but you also got that Brock Purdy guy, just, you know, who had a lot of of juice coming into this year. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, certainly, uh, I guess the question with Felipe Franks is, 
I guess the, the more intriguing question to me is, will we ever see Felipe Franks in a baseball uniform? I, was he a good baseball player? Well, he got, remember he got drafted by the uh, Red they always, Sox? They always do that with those quarterbacks. Yeah. 17 touchdowns, four interceptions for Franks last year, 69%. How many games? Um, I, 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 Has he missed a couple, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, it's not. I'm the, the, the overall stat sheet I'm looking at doesn't have that. Also, yards per pass, 8.9. Yeah, it was good. Pretty good. Yards per attempt. Um, once I, uh, When it comes to the quarterback rating, he was... Sixteenth, it's not bad. Yeah, I'm just I'm surprised that he is not flashed. What, a little what is bit. he lacking? Right, because no, he's certainly size, arm. Well, the accuracy he's shows got some there. numbers. He definitely has the arm. I mean, we saw him throw it seventy yards in the air, and yeah, that, well, something missing though. From yeah, him. I wonder what it is. That's yeah, what I'm saying. I'm surprised. I mean, I was was Kellen Mond any better than like, Felipe Franks? He's definitely physically a better prospect even than Kyle Trask. Yeah, I just I, I'm curious. I'm curious where he will go. What is but you know, again, he could just be the latest six foot five, two hundred and forty pound guy to Ryan Finley, or just oh, name yeah. them. They're just okay, you know. They're just maybe they stick around the league. But if you ever have to count on them, you know, to start or otherwise, then it doesn't work out so well. But Trask was um, sixth in passer rating, forty three and eight. That's even better than seventeen and four, huh? Only 2,100 yards for Felipe Frank, so it's not a big uh, yardage total, although it was a shorter year. Yeah. Was was contrast second in college football in passing yards to Mac? I would say yes. Yeah. He had a lot. I know. 4,200 in a yeah. short year. Yeah. That seems pretty good. He did have some extra games, but, um, yeah, you know, he played uh, 12. Yeah. Georgia lost another receiver. I yet. saw that. And that, isn't that the kid who had the big game against Mississippi State? He's good. Yeah, he's probably He didn't have a big lot of numbers, but he was coming on. It seems like Mississippi State, because at the time I was like, who is that guy? Yeah. And he had like 100 and something yards and a couple touchdowns or three touchdowns or something. Yeah, he – um, Yeah, the George, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they got some issues. Now, you know, Kirby's saying the right thing, next man up, but those are your, your top two receivers. Yeah. They had 27 catches and three touchdowns last year, but uh, he was a freshman, so – Jermaine Burton. Yeah, Jermaine Burton. And and it might – they haven't said exactly what it is. So, they, you know, they, it's not a – it's a hyperextended knee at this point. They said it could range from minor to worse. They'll get more work today. On, so, the, on the surgery? No, on what he did. Yeah, because here it says, uh, according to the score in Atlanta mm-hmm. – oh, it just says knee injury. I thought it said knee surgery. Never yeah, mind. No, no, no. Yeah, hyperextended could be among a, a lot of things. He was carted off the field, but again, hyperextended could be, you know, you could be back in September. So, um, I don't know, but not good. Not no. what you want. Yeah, not, well, the losing Pickens, who was a, you know, potential first round pick. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hurt, and you pile this on top of it. So, yeah. Anyway. Gators Pro Day starts at, uh, I think it's uh, 9 30 this morning. Uh, Kyle Pitts, Kadarius Tony, Kyle Trask, um, those type of things. So, well, um, speaking of Kyle Pitts, did you see the latest big board from Mel Kuyper? Yeah. Um, Two. Kyle Pitts would be happy to see that. Kyle Pitts would be happy when his name gets called in the top ten as a tight end and probably five or six. Are we – is he being overstated at all? I, I just don't feel Hard like he say. is. He was you know, really good. He's really good. He's – it's – I don't know. That's a good question. What's like the, what's the lowest you think he goes? Like if everything goes not at, his way, not his way, ten or eleven. I don't think he get past the Giants at eleven. Yeah, right. Yeah, because I know a lot of Jaguar fans are thinking, oh well, if there's a little slide, it's like, right. What do you do? How you know? Can you get up? Yeah, and, can... and just as many are like, you, under no circumstances you trade him for a tight end. Yeah. So there's there's both schools of thought, but well, here's the thing: everybody's getting pushed down because it's going to go quarterback, 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 and. And maybe quarterback. And probably quarterback. If I would be surprised if the, And then Chase? If I was Atlanta, I guess you gotta decide if you I'd want. take Fields if he's there. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. I would not take the in, in, any of the other ones. You wouldn't trade it and take somebody else. Well, and, if I'm not if, if Fields has gone three, no, no. what if Fields is there? I would I would take Fields. If you're Atlanta. Yeah. You wouldn't just say, Let's wait. No. We got Matt Ryan, we can get a good player no. here. Let's take Kyle Pitts. No. No. I wouldn't. Do you think Atlanta's doing that? Uh, Atlanta not nec- hell bent on not necessarily. Because I think Carolina will be trying like heck to trade up with Atlanta. Now, if you're Atlanta, do you no, want to trade yeah, with Carolina no, not at and all. give them? Of course not. Yeah. 
Can't do it. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong. I just uh, – it, it's time. If you, you – listen, here's the problem. Mm-hmm. You draft someone else, you keep Matt Ryan. You you know, suddenly you're six, seven, win team the next few years. You're not picking third or, you know, no, you got fourth for a long time. Yeah. So, yeah. this is a good quarterback draft. Now, if Fields – I don't I, – again, I'll do to, to Mac. hope he has a 20-year career, goes to the Hall of Fame. If I'm Atlanta, I don't want to take a Mac Jones or Trey Lance, but I will take Justin Fields there if he's there. Yeah. So, okay, let's say the four quarterbacks go. The Bengals' offensive line maybe pits. The Dolphins are going to take one of those guys. Also saying Jamar Chase to the Bengals is a good possibility. Yeah, Yeah. there's a lot of talk that that's why the Eagles got out at six because they're absolutely convinced the Bengals will take Chase. Okay, well, then the Dolphins Dolphins might take him or they might take a Waddle or the Lions apparently were going to take a receiver, Carolina. That's where it gets starts to get dicey, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, yeah, he wouldn't get past one thing is for sure with a lot of these quarterbacks and other players, enjoy all this talk about you now because you'll be so forgotten in 10 minutes. Many of you will get drafted. You'll never play. I mean, every year there's these quarterbacks that you talk about. You know, I was reminded on the text line, the big tall kid from Buffalo was his name, Tyree Jackson. Yeah. You know, every year they these quarterbacks that have this, yeah. this, this appeal or that appeal and this opportunity, and yet somehow – they it doesn't live up. Mm-hmm. So enjoy this. And time. by the way, if you're Sam Ellinger and Kellen Mond, eat it up, boys. And by the way, these four or five <laughs> quarterbacks, we'll be ranking them, and two of them are going to be no good. Hundred uh, percent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, look back, and be like, oof. How did we miss that? Two yeah. of them, uh, you know. And obviously, the first guy you would say because we don't know anything about him is Lance. But what if Lance is Josh Allen? Who knows? Yeah. It's crazy. I, I I'll never figure this out. It's very hard. Just give me Trevor and let's go. Uh, lucky to have that. Yes. Call number three, Beef. Call number three. Let's go. Call number three right now at 641-1010. It's going to take off today's prize pack, which features a family four-pack of tickets to the Spring Jacksonville Boat Show at Met Park and Marina coming up April 16th, 17th, and 18th. They'll also get a $25 gift certificate for services at Famous Auto and Tire, where you can join XL Primetime this Friday at their Fleming Island location and try to secure your Trevor Town headband while supplies last. And our winner will be entered into the drawing for a chance to play with a friend at the Coastal Equipment Guggen Open coming up on Monday, April 12th at Hidden Hills. So call now, 641-1010.